Hi, and welcome back to the channel, The College Process. Once again, my name is Ed Zamora from Principia Prep. And today we're gonna to be going over making satisfactory academic progress in college, what it means, how it affects you, and so on and so forth. But before we get into that, if you are new to the channel and you're looking for additional college content, please hit the subscription button down below. It will notify you when new videos do come out, as well as if you do enjoy today's video, please leave us a comment and a like, it does help the channel. Now that being said, let's jump right into making satisfactory academic progress in college. So right off the bat, what is satisfactory academic progress? Well, the best way to think about it is in order to receive any type of financial aid, grants, scholarships, loans, work study programs, etc. You have to be hitting certain academic benchmark. That includes GPA as well as credits or classes to keep moving forward successfully towards completing your college degree and or certificate in a timely fashion. Now each college is going to have a federal standard requirement of a certain GPA requirement as well as certain credit requirements that need to be accomplished every semester. That's what I'm gonna be going over in this video is basically the standard requirement from the federal side which covers every single college and university your college will also have their own standards in place that they need you to accomplish from a GPA and credit or hourly perspective to be able to keep moving forward in your program and to be able to keep getting financial assistance of any kind, like I mentioned before, grants, scholarships, loans, work programs, etc. So always make sure to check with your academic advisor at your college to make sure what are their requirements here at the university you're gonna be attending that they need you to accomplish every semester. That way you don't fall below the SAP requirements if you do, obviously you're not gonna get any financial assistance here. So with that out of the way, let's talk about from the federal perspective, which covers once again, every college's ability to give you financial aid. The minimum GPA from the federal point of view has to be at least a 2.0. 2.0 is kind of like the cutoff. Once you fall below a 2.0, you cannot receive any federal aid, any state aid, any institutional aid, i.e. college money. Now, if you fall below the 2.0 requirement within any semester, typically what will happen is the university is going to kind of send you a warning within that academic year. So if you fall below SAP the first semester, typically send you an email in most cases to the student indicating you've fallen below SAP for the first semester, you need to get your GPA back up. So they're not going to take away your aid within an academic year, by the way. They will, however, if you do not get above that 2.0 again, will take away your aid and not allow you any aid available year two, three, and four, as long as your GPA is still under that two level. Now, let's say after the first academic year, freshman year, your student is under the 2.0 GPA requirement to be making satisfactory academic progress. What you can do is you can send the college an appeal trying to reinstate your aid if you've already lost it based on the fact that they've fallen below the 2.0 requirement. Now, many colleges will allow you to reinstate your aid, but they're gonna ask you to basically give them a written proposal indicating to them, number one, what happened. So obviously you can discuss with them, we had a death in the family, we had a medical issue, maybe I was injured as a student, maybe I had something else that happened that unfortunately did not allow me to be able to do the work. Also within that proposal, they're gonna to wanna to know what you're gonna be doing, what your game plan is essentially of getting yourself above that 2.0 and keeping yourself above a 2.0. So within the appeal that you'll be doing with the university, they're gonna want basically two things from you. Number one, let us know what happened and why you fell below the 2.0. And then number two, what is it that you're going to be doing as a student to get above the 2.0 and stay above the 2.0? Now, when it comes to appeals, basically you're only given one shot at this, by the way. So if you don't make SAP the first year, let's say freshman year, you're below a 2.0, then sophomore year, you get above the 2.0. And then let's say the second half of sophomore year or in junior year, you fall below it. It's very likely the college is not gonna look favorably on you if you keep falling below the 2.0 level, by the way. Now, many colleges within the appeal process will allow you to basically say, we're gonna take the class over again and redo it and get a better grade essentially going forward. But first check with your academic advisor to see how that college addresses the class that you're retaking over again. Because colleges will look at a class being taken over again in three different ways. The first way they're gonna basically consider a class being done over again is replacing the old grade. So let's say the first time you took the course, you got a D or an F on the course. So basically, let's just call it you failed, you got an F. Let's say you take the class over again, maybe over winter break or summer break before the next semester starts, and you get an A. What many colleges will do is they'll take the A and replace the F. So the F is just taken out. This will obviously increase your GPA and more than likely get you above the 2.0 GPA requirement for the SAP at that college. Now other colleges fall into category number two, where they'll basically say, okay, you got an F, you took the class over again, you got an A. What we're gonna do is we're basically going to put them together and your final course grade is a C. The third option that some colleges utilize is that they don't replace the grade. So basically on your transcript, if you got an F in the class and you got an A in the class, that school itself will basically put on your transcript that you took the class twice 
and once you got an F and once you got an A. So once again, check with your academic advisor and find out what will they do if you retake the class over again. Now, another way of looking to replace that grade as well to help your transcript to increase your GPA above the SAP requirement is also to ask your academic advisor, is it possible to take the course that I've already taken and maybe fail at a community college? or some other university, something that you might deem is easier for you to be able to take and get a higher grade. Now, what will happen is the reason you're asking the academic advisors, because many colleges will allow you to bring in courses as far as college credit from another university. However, most colleges and universities will not accept the grade. So really what you're doing in this place is you're going off, let's say to community college, retaking the class over again. Then what you're doing is transferring those credits over to your transcript, then eliminating the F essentially from the course you took there and just getting the college credit and no increase or decrease to your GPA. But in a sense, your GPA will go up because the F is being removed. However, what they typically do is we'll, they'll remove the F and give you a pass fail on your GPA. So just basically show you a P there on your transcript. But once again, check with your academic advisor if this is possible. Some colleges will allow you to do this. Some colleges will not allow you to do this as far as trying to get that F off your transcript. Now, also staying on the theme of the GPA, one other thing to consider too, as well as SAP from a GPA perspective, that 2.0 line that you must stay above to get any financial assistance is not taking into consideration your scholarship GPA requirement. Now, most colleges will require that you keep at least a 3.0 if you are getting a scholarship at that university to keep getting that scholarship every year. So let's say that you do after the first year fall below the 3.0 GPA. What you can do is you can still appeal, like I mentioned before, and let the university know you'd like to appeal for your scholarship to be reinstated, advising them of the plan you have in place, and then they're going to wait, believe it or not, until you get your GPA above that 3.0 level. Now, for the universities and colleges out there that deal with scholarship funds as far as a GPA requirement, which is typically the 3.0 I just told you, if you fall below that and in the next upcoming semester are not able to get your GPA above or at that 3.0 level, just consider that scholarship is just gone forever, unfortunately. When it comes to scholarship money, it's not the same as grant money. Grant money can be taken away, given back, so on and so forth based on different factors. Scholarship money typically, once you lose it, it's gone. They're not gonna give it back to you. So from a GPA perspective, in most cases I tell students, you wanna stay above that 3.0 level for everything all types of financial aid will be basically within the realm of being able to get it back every upcoming semester as long as you stay above that 3.0 level. That's really the goal here. 2.0 level is like the bare minimum you wanna hit, but 3.0 is really the number you're looking to stay at. Now that we talked about the satisfactory academic progress, the SAP from a GPA perspective, let's look at it from a credit perspective. Now, every college is gonna require you to take a certain amount of credits every semester to keep going through the process of getting closer and closer to graduating i.e. completing enough courses to keep the satisfactory academic progress in place. Now, when it comes to satisfactory academic progress, you typically need to be doing at least 12 college credits per semester. Now, the 12 college credits themselves are basically the bare minimum any student can take in almost every college per semester, fall and spring, to be deemed a full-time student. So once again, when I'm talking about the bare minimum, I mean what you barely need to be able to get financial assistance. Now, when it comes to taking the 12 college credits, if you do only take the bare minimum by the satisfactory academic progress to keep being able to get financial aid every year, what you're gonna notice is you're gonna be taking longer than the four years to graduate college because most college programs require that you take at least least 124 college credits to be able to graduate. So realistically speaking, if you're just doing 2.0 GPA and just doing 12 credits each semester, you're not only going to more likely lose financial assistance, you're going to be taking at least five years, if not longer, to graduate. Because once again, at 124 college credits, you need to basically be averaging 15 college credits per semester to be in line to graduate on time. So realistically speaking, even though we're talking about here the bare minimums you need from a grade perspective as well as a GPA perspective, to keep getting all your financial assistance, you wanna be at a 3.0 GPA. To be able to keep getting all your financial assistance and graduate on time, you wanna be averaging each semester 15 college credits. And with both those things in place for the satisfactory academic progress, so you have an understanding now of what you need to be doing, always obviously check with the academic advisor of that college to make sure that you're on track. Also check with the financial aid office as well if you have additional questions of making satisfactory academic progress. Because at your university, after you finish the fall semester of freshman year, financial aid office is actually the department checking your grades and your financial aid every semester going forward 
to make sure you're making progress and you can keep getting financial assistance. So think of it from this perspective. At the university, the academic advisor and the financial aid office are both there to help you. If you have questions, if you have concerns, if things are happening, if you're not passing courses, if you're having difficulty, always seek out help. Both the academic advisor and the financial aid offices are there to help you. So are all the other staff and members of that university. Their goal is to get you through the college passing, receiving all the aid you're eligible for in and out within that four-year time frame. That is their goal. They're there to help you. Now, at every university, by the way, there are learning centers. There are tutors available. There are people there to help you out on the academic side. If you need help with homework or specific subject matter, go to the academic center. Go to the tutoring centers. Get the university's assistance to be able to get in and out in a timely fashion. Now, if you have any questions about SAP and how it works or academic issues and so on and so forth, on the screen, you see our contact information. You can contact us at any point in time. The phone number and email actually go directly to me. And other than that, thank you for watching today's video. Once again, my name is Ed Zamora from Principia Prep.